Hey guys, Guy Level here, and today I'm gonna show you how I made those cat ears react to Twitch alerts. Now everyone has been asking me how did I make those cat ears move and blink uh, to Twitch alerts. So here's the video, I'm, I'm actually making it. The reason why I didn't want to make it is because I'm really bad at this. Uh, it, it took me uh, three months to figure out how to code something that would react in real life. Uh, with with twitch alerts and and to this day I still don't know how to code I'm really really bad so I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step tutorial because I couldn't even explain why this thing works <laughs> with that being said I'm also gonna go through um, how I made the robot arm that reacted to, to twitch chat I also I'm um, gonna talk about how I made the bubble machine that reacted to twitch alerts it's the it's all the same principle so um, let's 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 get right into it. Now when it comes to coding, just like there are many different languages that you can use to code, there are many different ways to achieve something. My goal was to get Twitch alerts and Twitch chat to interact with real life physical uh, electronic components. So the first thing I had to look up is how to make electronic components react without a computer. So I found out there are microcontrollers. I am using an Arduino board. It's an Arduino Uno, where it's basically like a microcomputer. Uh, you plug into your computer and you can upload some code and it will. It has different pins where you can put LEDs, relays, and a bunch of little components and make it react to it, basically. Arduino coding is fairly simple, so I, I, I learned it in about a week. So basically, you can program stuff. Let's take the LED example. You can program stuff like uh, turn LED on, turn it off, off. You can put a sequence and then you can do all sorts of complicated stuff um, up to building like a robot hand or whatever. So I just needed a way to not only get information from my Twitch channel, like when do I get an alert and how alerts are displayed, uh, but I also needed to communicate with my Arduino. <laughs> Anyways, here's the basic structure, okay? It all starts by creating a Twitch bot. That's right. Uh, you can use your own channel, uh, but it's better to use a separate channel. Basically, you create a new channel, and uh, this channel is going to be your bot channel. In my case, it's Get On My Level Bot. Now, I watched this tutorial by Dev Coffee. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a link in the description. I watched a tutorial on how to create a bot. And basically, it's a JavaScript bot. You're going to create a JavaScript program, uh, which is going to control your bot. And somehow, you're going to get it to communicate with the Twitch API. The Twitch API is basically something that will transfer information uh, such as, oh, you just got a new follower or, or, or someone typed in chat and all of that. The bot uses a library, a JavaScript library called Node.js that's going to help uh, communicate in real time with uh, the Twitch API. And then you have to install the Twitch library, I believe it's called tmi.js. TMI and there's, there's documentation, there will be links in the description and they will tell you how to use it basically. But now that you created your bot, you can do all the stuff that, for example, Nightbot could do or Streamlabs bot. Uh, this is not what we are looking for, but we could do it. We could have code because we are getting the information. We can set it so that the bot writes something in chat every time you get a follower or something like that. But this, this is not interesting for us. What's interesting for us is how are we going to get our Arduino to communicate with this bot in JavaScript? And that's when I found a library called Johnny5 that is specifically made for uh, using Arduino with JavaScript and communicating with the Arduino in real time. So technically you don't have to code anything in Arduino. So Johnny5 has all the documentation just like any other library. They actually support a bunch of electronic components. They even have um, animations that are already built in the library. So if you have something like a servo, which is what I use on the uh, cat ears, they will have an animation called sweep and you can just like set the parameters for the sweep depending on the degree. Uh, the servos that I'm using are 180 degrees, so obviously they're not going 180 degrees, right? I, I think I have them at a 98, 90 degree angle. Okay, here because this is where my camera used to be. Jesus Christ. So if I had to explain it quickly, it would be like that. You create a new Twitch channel, uh, you make a dra JavaScript program that is going to control the Switch channel as a bot. You install Node.js because you need it to actually create the bot. Uh, you install the TMI.js, which is the uh, Twitch API or the Twitch library. And then you install Johnny5, which is the library to control 
uh, the Arduino. Now, with that being said, the major components that I that I have tested myself are uh, LEDs, obviously, because it's easy to plug in LEDs into Arduino. Right now, we're just controlling a bunch of lights with chat. So if you type the word flashy, um, the blue light will go off for seven seconds, basically. That's what we're doing. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna show you how to use Arduino because it's like hours, hours of knowledge. But if you look it up and you get familiar with Arduino, you will be able to, to use all of that. I've also worked with relays and the very interesting thing with relays is that you can plug in appliances. Well, not, a, not appliances, but you can plug in lights, for example. Basically, I add a relay. A relay is basically something that's going to be plugged into your Arduino and then plugged into your uh, wall socket, and then you can plug something else to it. For example, I had this light connected to my relay, and basically every time someone would uh, sub or would give bits, it would turn on the relay so the current would flow and go to the light bulb. And then I would have disco lights. This is a disco, a disco light bulb. And all of that was controlled through Johnny five. Basically the code you, that you would have to write is if you get an alert, turn on the relay or whatever is on the, the specific Arduino pin and then wait 10 seconds and then turn it off. It's really that simple. It's actually that simple. Um, so when it comes to the cat ears, it's a little bit more complex. As you can see, I have LEDs going through it and I have uh, motors going through it. Now the motors uh, have more function than just turn on and turn off. As I said, they have pre-built animations like sweep. So basically I have um, when I get bits or when I get subs, it's the same thing. Sweep from this angle to this angle for this amount of time and then stop. And I have the same thing for the LEDs. When it comes to the chat, it's uh, a similar command. It's like if someone types this in chat, then do this uh, for a number of time and then stop or, or just do this for a number of seconds uh, the, or just turn this on or turn this off basically. So for the bubble machine, it was the relay. Uh, the relay, I would just have to plug in the bubble machine, turn it on. And then once I get the alerts, it would turn it, it would let the current go through and then it would cut the current. I basically use the relay as a switch just like a simple switch. For the cat ears, obviously, there's a bunch of hot glue. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, cables. There was a lot of soldering and I hate soldering, but I had to. And for the base, the thing that the servo is going to sit on, uh, I had to design it myself and 3D print it. Um, it's being held on by zip ties, but there's a little problem with that. We'll, we'll go over that a little bit later. Uh, for the cat ears themselves, I found a model on Thingiverse, a 3D model, because I, I own a 3D printer, so those were 3D printed. Um, I found a model on Thingiverse. I do not remember the name, but I'll probably leave a link to the model. And then I just cut it because it was like a, a full shape, uh, a full cat ear. I just cut it so it would be more plain. I didn't think of putting LEDs at first, so I had to drill holes to put the LEDs and then hot glue them in place. So basically, here's the setup. Before I stream, I will plug in my Earth Arduino to the computer and I will launch my program, my JavaScript program basically, which is pretty much my bot. I will launch the bot that I created. And then I have this breadboard where everything coming from the uh, headset is plugged in. Breadboards are great. The problem is that it's not a permanent thing. Like it, I, I, I'm using a breadboard because I know that at some point I'm gonna just dismantle it and start over again. Nothing is color coded correctly but basically, I only have three pins. I have one pin for both LEDs because they're um, synced. Basically, they blink at the same time and they turn off at the same time. But I have uh, different pins for the two motors. So we'll see one LED pin and then the two motors. From each little servo motor, there's like three cables. One for the power. So that's what you're going to plug in the five volts and the Arduino. Uh, one for the ground, because everything has to be grounded. And then one for the actual Arduino pin, for the um, data pin, basically. It's what's going to give it information on where to go and everything, when to start, when to stop. And then from the LEDs, there are only two cables, because I've connected them in parallel. So I have them soldered uh, plus with plus, minus with minus, and then I have just two cables coming out. And it's going to power both of them at the same time. So negative is going to be ground on the Arduino, and then the other one is going to be... 
uh, one of the pins. In this case, it's pin 13. So that means that on the breadboard, you're gonna have six pins coming from the servos, plus two pins coming from the LEDs, and then those are, um, I have other pins going from the breadboard to the Arduino to connect them at the right spot, basically. So as you can see, I had to wire a couple of things together. I have the wire going alongside the, the actual headset wire. So uh, it really feels natural when, I, when I'm like taking it off and everything. So um, to conclude, I need to talk about the zip ties. Why are the zip ties a problem? The thing is those servo motors that I'm using, those very, very cheap servo motors that I'm using, or uh, they buzz, they have a buzzing sound when they're powered basically. And that is transferred through the headset. The headset is solid, at least where they are mounted is solid. So it's plastic against plastic, firmly adjusted and a little bit of vibration. So you can actually hear it. I went with the Be Excellent headset because it, it's what I was using and it's pretty cool, already has blue LEDs. But yeah, so when, you actually, when I actually get an alert and it starts moving, the Obviously, it sends a lot of vibration through the headset, so I just hear It's, it's, I've gotten used to it, but also I'm always playing music throughout my stream, so it doesn't bother me too much. But hopefully in the future, I might do the same project with either better servo motors or maybe put a little bit of foam. Uh, I've tried that, it was better, but like it looked so ridiculous, I had to get rid of it. I also thought um, maybe Velcro, uh, with sticky tape to some foam and then to, to the base. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need to know on when it comes to how I actually got it working. It does take a little bit of code. You, It would be best if you knew JavaScript because I know I struggled. I do want to give a huge shout out to Nova Evermoon, uh, my best friend, but she also helped me a lot with the, the basic JavaScript stuff. I couldn't even, I didn't even know how to launch a JavaScript program from my computer and she helped me with that. I'm still really bad at JavaScript and I need to learn. <laughs> at some point I will learn. If you guys want to talk about it, just uh, join my Discord. We can talk about it some more. All the links will be in the description when it comes to the, li the libraries like Johnny5, uh, TMI.js, which is the Twitch API. And uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. <laughs> okay, now my question for you is, what type of projects would you like me to make in the future? We already made a robot arm that reacted to Twitch chat, which was pretty cool. We also had the bubble machine that reacted to Twitch alerts. Uh, now we have cat ears that dance and blink uh, through Twitch alerts. I was thinking about maybe an LED necklace that would maybe even display stuff. Why not? Initially, I thought like it would blink different colors for different alerts, but it could also like display. We can make like a little LCD display that reacts to Twitch alerts. That would be cool. But I want to know what you think. What you think? Give me your good ideas. And also, if you know JavaScript and you're good with that stuff, please get in touch with me because I'm struggling. I'm struggling, but I have a bunch of ideas I would like to uh, well to create, and we could we could work together. Okay, so hit me up. Hit me up if you know all about this. Uh, social media is gonna be up there. You, you guys can follow me on Twitch. If you want to talk some more, uh, I have a show called Stream Review where I review people's stream every Friday, 9 p.m. CET, that is Paris Friends time. Uh, if you're looking for some dope overlays, you can go to gumroad.com slash get level. Uh, we have a bunch of free overlays there and then the rest is like super dirt cheap. If you're new to streaming, you can download Streamlabs OBS. It's the best broadcasting software out there pretty much. Um, with my affiliate link, it's free for you, but I'm getting a little bit of money if you download it from my link, so please consider it. But that's it for today. Leave your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Go out there, make me proud. I will see you guys next time. Get level, out. Also, did you see that thing? That nano leaf looking thing? I made it myself. Next video, I, well, not next, not necessarily next video, but I'm gonna make a video about it. So uh, keep an eye on that. I have a Twitter, I have a Twitter thread showing step-by-step step how I made it. Anyways, guy level out. <laughs>